the stage of Dajjal is being set up. He is not going to come out of the blue when people are speaking and are filled with Iman and vigor. Meaning he will come in an era when there's ghafla, when there's heedlessness. People will be expecting it. But what you need to understand is that all of you who've come here most definitely have read and have definitely heard speeches in Dajjal. More than I can tell you in the next little time that I have, 20 minutes. You've heard enough, you've read enough about it. And you know that he's going to be given supernatural powers. You know he's going to be given some interesting things. You know he's a human being. But Allah Azza wa Jal through his qudra will give him certain things that no one else has ever had. And he will be one big of a magician. He will be one amazing magician who will do some amazing tricks. Supernatural to the eye. In reality, not supernatural. It's a big deception. Okay? It's a big deception. Like a movie set. The building actually doesn't blow up. The car actually doesn't blow up. The person doesn't actually fall down. I mean, really, we should watch that. I mean, you should watch how a certain any type of movie is made. Study that with the intention of how the jal will work. There's an actual movie a person fall. You see, oh my God, he fell 110 stories. Whoa! Anyone will say that. Now go and go see that if that same company that has produced that movie, the producers, if they have behind the scenes shots, and look how they did that. Amazing. You would say, Wallahi ala azim, this guy fell. I can swear by Allah. I don't know about Jannah or Jahannam exists, but this guy fell. That's how real it is. Now that's what we normal human beings who work 8 to 5 are able to pull off right now. Make the most unthinkable, the most unimaginable possible on the screen. Yes or no? What is there that we can do? Through Photoshop, advanced Photoshop, and what we can do through these movie makers and what we can do through the, the directors in Hollywood. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. You name it, they'll do it. This is way before the Jal is around. So when the Jal comes, the master movie maker, the master director, the master, master orchestrator, the tools he's going to have are nothing like any director has ever imagined. Nothing like any studio has ever had. It is at another whole level. And my friends, when he will orchestrate something, vast majority of people will fall. They will believe in him. The only people who will, will not believe in him are true believers in Allah Azza wa Jal who have a faith in the unseen. And who have such faith in the unseen who can belie everything besides what Allah and His Rasul say. For example, I, mean, I, I usually base this off a hadith related by Imam Muslim. And this is a powerful hadith. Imam Muslim rahimahullah, mentions on the authority of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu. He says, Allah Azza wa Rasul Sallam says, La ana a'lamu bima ma'ad dajjali min. I know very well what tools the Jal will be equipped with. I actually know it better than he, than he knows, better than anyone knows. I know exactly what tools the Jal will be equipped with. The Prophet said, some of the tools. Now he mentions one tool. Ma'ahu nahra. Like magicians have their magic tricks. Magicians have their magic tricks. The bunny and the hat and all that stuff. Also, something I know. I know what bunny and the hat he's got. What has he got? He will have two rivers that will flow along with him. He will come to a community, for example, and he will say, drink. So Rasulullah said, One of them in front of your eyes, right in front of your eyes, you will see this river, clear, sparkling water. It's very obvious. Very obvious, clear sparkling water. And the other one right in front of the eyes will be flowing lava. What is it? Flowing lava. Narun. Harakti we are flowing. The Prophet then said, If any of you, listen up, if any of you 
come to that juncture when in front of you is Dajjal and in front of him is these two rivers and he's telling you drink you have to drink the Prophet ﷺ said فَلْيَأْتِ النَّهْرَ الَّذِي يَرَاهُ نَارًا then go to that river which you see with your own eyes that it is what? fire this is tough because this is not fake stuff like a movie screen this is real as real as it can get while being fake as real as it can get while being fake this is human beings that are doing this right now and there's probably way more stuff that I don't know about that's way beyond this as well now this is the Dajjal so this water that he's got which he shows to you as flowing lava it's gonna actually look like it it's gonna smell like it it's gonna feel like it every sense of it the heat is gonna be there the Prophet ﷺ said go to that river that looks like fire and then he said that while you close your eyes you need to close your eyes because what I'm gonna ask you to do is very painful close your eyes and then put your head down and drink from that lava. Why would you do something like that? As soon as you do that, you will realize in reality, that is the cold water. That is the cold water. And if you were to follow your instinct, if you were to follow what your master's thesis taught you, if you're to follow what your relatives tell you, if you're to follow popular culture, if you're to follow what everyone else is doing, you would do that which is logical, that which makes sense to you, is to put your mouth towards the river that has the sparkling cold water. And no sooner do you do that, you'll find that to be the burning lava. Respected friends, it's not the burning lava of the world, you burn your lips and you die. No, this is Jahannam. That going towards there will lead you to the hellfire. It's over. You've lost it. You've lost the whole battle. And the one who says, looks at Dajjal and say, you're one big liar. You're an imposter. And all of you sitting there, keep quiet. I don't want to hear you. I don't want you to pull me back. I am going to close my eyes and believe in what my Prophet ﷺ said. And I'm going to be lie what the world says and I'm gonna belie what my senses tell me I'm gonna even belie what makes sense to me what my eyes tell me what my sensory organs send to my brain and I'm gonna give more faith and more credibility to what my prophet said than everything else are you understanding this this is what the test of Dajjal is the test of giving preference to the unseen over the seen. it is not easy my brothers and sisters if we as a youth today do not become strong enough to stand up to trends and stop chasing trends and fashions, I fear, I fear, I fear that when following the Jal will become very trendy, we may fall into that trap. Our deen is never trendy. Our deen is one single path that has never changed and will never change. People will change, cultures will change, trends will change. But my Nabi's way will never change. Respect the friends. What did I say the fitna of the Jal is about? It's a fitna of being able to stand up against the trends. To do what's right. Change the trend. Change, make Islam trendy. In a sense that create an environment where people want to follow Islam. Make Islam something beautiful. Present it to in a manner that people yearn towards it. Our own Muslim youth should say, I want to be a Muslim. I enjoy Muslim gatherings. Have that vibe of, of love and beautiful community activity and, 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 and genuine genuineness, humbleness, humility, welcomingness for people from all backgrounds in our masjids. Helpfulness that it would steal a person's heart. And he says, you know what? I love it being here. MashaAllah, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear youth, my dear uncles and aunties, you will be and I will be inshallah Azza wa Jal really have won the lottery big time you will come wake up on the day of judgment and you'll say thank God I was born during this day and age thank God I was challenged with the challenge that I went through because it made me only stronger and it only made it allowed me to become who I am today with this beautiful paradise the reward is very high now the stakes are high the stakes are really high so this is not the time to become depressed this is the time to ground in your feet into the ground 
and get ready for the ride. Put on your seatbelt, stick on to that. It's a roller coaster. It has begun. And it's going to only get faster by day. And it's only going to get twistier by the day. It's only going to become a greater shock by the day. But as long as you're buckled in, like when you go to this Six Flags and whatnot, how many of us actually think we're going to fall out? It's scary, fine, but you're buckled in, it's fine. If you're buckled in by holding on to the sunnah, then no matter what the storm will go in what direction, inshallah, you won't fall out. You won't fall out. It's going to be a thrill. It's going to be intimidating at times. But, alayhi fal yatawakkal mutawakkilun. The, the mu'minun need to have the reliance upon Allah. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ I have no tawfiq. Tawfiq, ability to do good, only comes from Allah. Not from me, not from my parents, not from my teachers, not from any community, not from anything. It comes from Allah. Allah is the only one who's going to save me from the environment and from, my, from the deconstructive elements of university study. It is only Allah who will save me from falling into the traps in high school. It is only Allah who's going to save me from falling into traps in the banking system and in the finance system. Allah is going to give me the I put my reliance in Allah. وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبَ And to Him I return. And I turn. I turn. Ya Allah, guide me. 